An illegal blockade of one of the main border crossings between Canada and the U.S. is starting to have an adverse effect on the economy. A small group of around 100 anti-vaxxer truckers is preventing traffic, including supply parts, from moving across a key bridge. The truckers say they will not move until the government scraps a mandate for them to be fully vaccinated to enter Canada. More than 80 percent of Canadians are vaccinated. The Ambassador Bridge would normally be humming with traffic. But these protesters have brought that grinding to a halt. For three days now, they've been blockading this key border crossing. They're part of the so-called Freedom Convoy that started in opposition to mandatory COVID vaccinations for truckers, but has since snowballed into a broader expression of anger with pandemic restrictions and Canada's government. The White House says the blockade is concerning. The Ambassador Bridge is Canada's busiest link to the United States and accounts for about 25 percent of trade uh, between the two countries. And so the blockade poses a risk to supply chains. For now, many trucks are being forced to detour nearly two hours to this alternative bridge. Protesters have also paralyzed the heart of Canada's capital for nearly two weeks. They say they won't leave until all pandemic restrictions are scrapped. Stand up for our freedom. Stand up for our children, our future. No mandates, no vaccines, unless people choose to take a vaccine. With more than 400 trucks blocking roads, most businesses in the area have been forced to close. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said his government won't change course. You cannot stop a pandemic with blockades. You cannot end a pandemic by decree. You can't end a pandemic by legislation. You need to end a pandemic by relying on science, by public health measures, and by vaccinations. And even as Canadians are tired and impatient for it to end, we are going to continue to be there for them, to support them through it, and to make sure we do everything necessary to end this pandemic. Police have seized thousands of litres of fuel as part of efforts to break the blockades. But protesters appear determined and are settling in for the long haul. Well, for more now, I'm joined by Evan Dyer. He is a senior reporter with the CBC. He's in Ottawa. Evan, it's good to see you again. Maybe you can update us. What's the status of, of traffic along this important Ambassador Bridge? I mean, are any trucks moving at all? Well, it actually changes almost hour to hour, but it, it seems that uh, the latest development is that the police on the Windsor side of the bridge. This is basically a bridge that uh, goes from the Canadian side to the U.S. side of this Detroit-Windsor metropolitan area, which is really uh, sort of one urban area. And the police on the Windsor side have been able to open one lane heading towards Detroit. So uh, traffic is moving slowly in that direction. Whether that situation will last, we don't know, because we've seen this happen before. The bridge has opened only to close down again. And there's no traffic coming in the other direction at the moment. So no traffic coming wow. from Michigan into Ontario. Uh, and in the meantime, police diverted uh, truckers and other traffic to another bridge about 100 kilometers away. This links Sarnia, Ontario, with Port Huron, Michigan. Uh, it's a less important trade route, but still significant. And yet that is now being blocked as well. There's a new tractor protest on the highway leading towards that bridge. It doesn't appear to be interfering with traffic coming from Michigan into Ontario, but it is stopping traffic going the other way. So the bridges remain, if not entirely sealed, almost. Yeah, so, so the situation is volatile and it's unpredictable. If any of these bridges is blocked or if you just have one lane open, we're talking about an economic crisis for both Canada and the United States in the making here, aren't we? That's right. I mean, Windsor, Detroit is the heart of the North American auto industry. This is where more cars are made than anywhere else in the U.S. or Canada. And these cars typically cross the border multiple times. The auto industry often talks about the average car going back and forth seven times before it's finished or various parts of it, the motor, the drivetrain, etc. And of course, a lot of the car industry, like so many industries now, depends on just in time delivery. So when those goods don't arrive in time, whole shifts have to be furloughed at car plants. And that is the kind of thing that we're starting to see right now with a lot of uh, high expense attached to that kind of shutdown. And we know the truckers are protesting the COVID-19 vaccination mandate um, for those truckers who do have to cross the U.S. 
Canadian border. I mean, do we know how many truckers yeah. are already fully vaccinated? Yes, we do have an estimate, and it actually is very much in line with the general Canadian adult population. It's somewhere on the order of 90 percent uh, have at least a first dose and, and not far short of that for being fully vaccinated, which is considered to be two doses. A lot of them now would also have their third booster dose. So, uh, however, I should say that politically, it, it is a bit of a mistake to assume, as the government appears to have at the beginning of this crisis, mm -hmm. that vaccinated truckers would be on side with the government against their unvaccinated counterparts. Because we have seen that there are vaccinated truckers, I've met them personally at the protest, mm -hmm. who nonetheless support this protest and who say it's not that they're anti-vaccine, they're not anti-vax per se. You'll see this written on signs at the protest. They say they're anti-mandate. And as we heard in that tape you were playing off the top, for them it's a freedom issue. So uh, the political division is not quite the same as the split between vaxxed and unvaxxed. I mean, it's important that you, that you uh, bring that to our attention. So it's not that they are against being vaccinated. It's just they want to have the freedom to say yes or no to the vaccinations. We we're seeing across the U.S., Mask mandates, for example, they're being lifted. Um, and a lot of people are yeah. talking about maybe this is the beginning of the end of the pandemic. Why doesn't the Canadian government just lift this vaccination mandate? Or, or has the situation just gone too far now? Would too many politicians lose face if they lifted the restrictions? I think at this point, there is indeed an issue of fear in, among the federal government and the liberal government of Justin Trudeau that that could be perceived as a capitulation. Uh, it has to be said, however, they did not show any sign prior to this protest that they were on track to lift restrictions soon. Since then, we've seen, as you say, a wave of not only countries in Europe lifting restrictions, but also today, New York State and many other democratic controlled states in the US, such as California, have already taken that step. So the pressure is building for that to happen. And we saw yesterday a defection of one member of Justin Trudeau's government, which uh, a member who came out and held a news conference and essentially accused his own leader of politicizing vaccination and trying to use it as a wedge issue. Today, we've seen yet another defection. And both of these members who've left uh, they haven't left the caucus, but they've left the consensus, let's say. Yeah. And they've both said that there are many other people within the Trudeau government, within their caucus, who feel the same way. So there is a lot of pressure now for these restrictions to be lifted. And at the provincial level in Canada, which controls a lot of the lockdowns, they're not, they're not mandated by the federal government, they're controlled provincially. We are seeing exactly that happen with two provinces already lifting all restrictions or announcing plans to do so very soon. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is a fascinating story, especially because there are are so many so-called copycat convoys planned in the U.S., but also here in Europe. I mean, this story definitely has some long legs on it. Evan Dyer with the CBC joining us tonight from Ottawa. Evan, thank you. Thanks.